Hello everyone, um, I'm Olivier Tuordo from uh, Valoris Company and I'm here to present uh, our current work on how we adapt uh, the Guayul uh, to the urban brownfields. Uh, this is a uh, collective work that was done with my uh, colleagues uh, from Valoris but also from uh, CIRAD, uh, both in Montpellier, uh, France. So the, the first question that we may have is uh, why we want to adapt Guayul to urban brownfields. This will be the thing that we'll try to answer in the first point of my presentations. And after I will present you the Guayul project, we we'll try to, uh, to do it and then uh, a short uh, perspective. So uh, urban areas are the place where more and more people live and work. Um, this increase in the urban uh, area, uh, urban populations is related also by an increase in land artificializations because we need buildings, we need the houses, we need uh, shops for all these people. Uh, all these artificializations uh, is related also to a decrease of the natural areas and the presence of nature in, uh, in cities. But nature provides ecosystem services to humankind. Uh, I won't list all the ecosystem services that uh, nature can provide, but you can think of uh, local climate regulations, carbon sequestrations, um, nutrient cycling, uh, water uh, purification, and flood regulations. Uh, all these ecosystem services are very important worldwide but uh, in particular in cities, because this is the place where there is a lot of people. So there's a lot of people that are uh, concerned in local climate regulation, for example. And at the other side of the cities, you also have scars uh, that correspond to uh, urban brownfields. Uh, they are related to the decrease of uh, industries. Uh, you can see here in the red dots here and uh, the increase uh, the other side of the services um, economy. Um, the decrease of manufacturing uh, let a lot of um, industrial landscapes uh, abandoned um, with uh, degraded soils, a very low level of natural naturalities. Um, so the idea is how we can transform all these cars uh, into uh, ecosystem services hotspots. So our idea in Valoris is to use nature-based solutions to convert uh, all these brownfields into ecosystem services hotspots, in particular in cities for uh, people that live there. Uh, and one of the nature-based solutions that we are interested in are the uh, ones that are related to uh, biomass production. And uh, being able to, uh, to produce biomass uh, in brownfields require to deal with uh, several uh, constraints is that uh, requires innovative uh, solutions. Uh, for example, uh, you will have soil dysfunctions for sure. You may have pollutions, moreover. Uh, they will often uh, boundaries are ready to access restrictions uh, due to uh, risk or um, the, the fact that um, there will be like unwanted uh, people that come there so that you, you, you fence all the, the brown fields, for example. And also there will be uh, an aspect that is very important in brown fields is the temporality. Sometimes a brown fields will stay as it for decades, but uh, sometimes this is just for uh, a temporary period that you can have a uh, biomass production, for example, for five years, 15 years, something like that. Uh, and after the brown fields uh, will have another use. And uh, you also have to deal with certainty management because brown fields are always a complex things uh, that interact with uh, politics, um, uh, company strategy, um, rules, legislation, things like that. So our question here is, is Guayur uh, industrial crop um, adapt to brownfields? 
we have like some insights that will say mm, this is a good idea. Uh, for example, uh, there's a several studies that were already done on Royal, and in particular in the European context, that shows that uh, this crop can be profitable on small uh, surfaces that uh, are quite common uh, when you, you are in the urban areas. Uh, the crops can be profitable on uh, a relatively uh, short uh, period. You might say, oh, 10 years is a lot, but uh, you, you can see on the other side that it would be like a popular uh, biomass production that are a rather something on 20 or 30 years uh, rotation. Um, this plant came from the Chihuahua uh, desert, so we they are adapted to arid conditions. And this is something very common in brown fields to have rather arid conditions because you have like a, uh, soils that can't uh, retain a lot of water and something like that. And uh, you know, there's something called the climate change. Um, moreover, guayul is a perennial crop, and uh, the idea is to, uh, as a perennial plant, it will be able to uh, provide some services all along the year. And uh, this is um, an industrial crop, so it means you, you can make money with it. So it's interesting to think that natural gas solutions in uh, brown fields uh, can be uh, economically uh, viable. So the Agroguil project. Um, so this is a, a project that is uh, led by Valoris and um, Merge uh, six partners that are listing there with the various uh, expertise. And our uh, common uh, aim is to break uh, some uh, technical or economical barriers to be able to uh, to, grow, uh, to cultivate quails on bound fields and to see how it can be technically uh, done. And this is uh, we are close to the last year of the of the project. So uh, first, uh, I need to speak about some uh, specificities of barn fields, and I will use uh, this picture where here you can you have our uh, experimental uh, guayul uh, plantations in the metropole of Lyon in, uh, in France. Um, so you have a farm uh, scattered parcels where you have like uh, some hectares together, but sometimes you can have like one hectare here, one hectare there, and something like that. So a lot of uh, high level of scattering. Uh, often you have limited access for humans and engines because roads are not made for that. Uh, they also may have some uh, technological risk related to uh, nearby um, industries. You can have sometimes access to water, gray water from the your cities or maybe blue water, but sometimes you, you can't have access to water. Um, and something that is very important for us is that these places are they are in the core of the cities. Uh, there is a high level of expectation in terms of ecosystem services. Um, so you can't think just this thing just economically, but also ecologically. Uh, this is a, a very important point uh, to to be able to provide as much as possible ecosystem services. And sometimes you can have also very interesting uh, financial conditions to have access to the land, depending of uh, the owner. So how we, we try to adapt the technical itinerary to, um, to our bond field. First, we, we make the choice to, to do an IV investment on seedlings uh, and after uh, plant them on site. And uh, they, they were carefully uh, followed during the, the nursery uh, phase. And also, we plant them at a high density uh, to deal with uh, mortality because there won't be a dead plant uh, replacement. To, uh, so the idea is to, to make an invest, um, quite huge investment at the beginning when we do the plantation and after like have a very uh, light uh, for uh, we also in this uh, like uh, way of thinking we also improve soil with compost to, to help the plant to, to have nutrients and uh, deal with uh, water uh, access. Uh, we did manual plantation and water watering just the first summer to to be in the case where you can come with engines and there won't be there will on this one there will be any uh, weed or pest management 
we did two plantations with this with this uh, technical itinerary so with few variations we took two of them and i will uh, focus on that one that is million and uh, because this is a quite uh, continental uh, context and i think it's interesting to, to discuss on this one uh, so we compared these plantations after a one or two, after almost two years um, in terms of uh, survival, production, and things like that. And our main conclusion are listed there. And we compared uh, this plantation here to a, a, a classical uh, plantation in Mopoli uh, that was uh, the present watering and wood management, but also a lower density. So uh, on our uh, ground field, we got uh, a low survival rate, but also a reduced plant biomass. We can start thinking, okay, <laughs> this is the end, the end of everything. But now we have a very interesting uh, latex content in this plant. Uh, so at the end, we got a lower yield, 10, uh, 10 times lower than the, the classical plantations, but um, also we get a very low environmental impacts in the life cycle analysis. Um, that means you, there is a, a lot of possibilities of improvement. Uh, if we are able to improve uh, survival and plant biomass and kept the high latex content, we start adding something that can be interesting in a, uh, in a economical perspective. And we know already that we have something interesting in terms of uh, ecosystem services because uh, there are already several uh, ecosystem services in terms of carbon sequestration, um, local climate regulation, saying that so we, I think we are going in the right direction with this uh, approach. Um, so let's speak about the perspectives. Um, we in the Agroway project, we still have to work on the economical evaluations. Uh, uh, when you see these very low uh, yields, you can you, man, you must think of that of the idea that there were a very low management also. So you have uh, small benefits, but you also have smaller costs. So we need to evaluate these things. Uh, there is also uh, we are uh, thinking about uh, the value chains, how we can uh, implement them mm -hmm. and its specificities, in particular for bond fields. So you, you can um, have a, a talk a little bit later that will speak about this aspect, also from the whole project. And uh, as we work on in a life cycle analysis context, we are able now to, to think about uh, eco design optimizations in terms of watering, harvesting, but also a business model um, to have something like for the future uh, that will provide uh, rubber and also ecosystem services on the brownfields. Uh, I want to thank you uh, for listening to me. Um, and if you have questions, I will be available during the questions period, but also uh, you can uh, contact me by, uh, by email. And I thank you a lot. And See you soon, I hope. Bye.